Today you all have gathered here to do the Guru Puja. Your Guru is a mother first and then a Guru. And that has given me a greater health. We have had before also many Guru Pujas, mostly in England. And you should wonder why Mother always somehow is doing Guru Puja in London. The time falls in such a way that it is in Guru Puja. I am here, during that time <coughs> I, I have to be in London. So many years we have been de- doing Guru Puja in England. <coughs> All things happen if according to Rutambhara Pragya, then there must be some reason why Mother is here in England for a Guru Puja. It is stated in the Puranas that the Adi Guru, Dattatraya, worshipped Mother along the banks of the river Tamasa. Tamasa is the same as your Thames is. And he himself came and worshipped here. And the Druids, those who had the manifestation of the stone henge and all that, are originated from that time in this great country of Shiva or the Spirit. So the Spirit resides here as in the heart of human beings and the Sastrara is in the Himalayas where Sadashiva exists at the Kailasha. This is the great secret of we having so many Guru Pujas here. To culminate it today into the special type of Guru Puja in the year of the 60th birthday of your mother is, has a special, very, very special significance because it's the Guru Sashti, it's the 60 years of your Guru has been celebrated today and that's how it's a very big occasion that you all have gathered under the influence of again Rutambhara Pranya. So all that has happened, has happened by the nature's own gift to you and everything has worked out so well because that was the desire of the design divine and the design of the divine. So the river Thames, which we call her as Thames, you see English have a method of making everything English. <laughs> uh, like Bombay they made it, Mumbai, Mumbai was Bombay, you see, like Calcutta, like all other words were like that. Like Varanasi was made into Banaras, river Thames, which was really Tamsa was called as Thames. <coughs> now from the name Tamsa, one should know that is a place of Tamoguna. It is a place where left-sided resided since long. So people were very worshipful, left-sided people, emotional type. And they worshipped God more than that they went into yagyas and all that. And Dattatraya lived here and meditated on the banks of river Thames. That's why Guru Puja here has to give us 
the great background for your awakening of the Guru principle. We have to go to the roots of everything so that we understand the importance of it. Unless until you know the roots and the traditions behind, you cannot understand the depth, the gravity, the intensity of any puja. Today we have gathered here to do the Guru Puja. Again, the reason is we have got a Guru principle within ourselves, as I told you last time, and also I have given elaborately the ten uh, commandments as expressed within us, which are describing the different, the different types of essences within us. The essence of Guru Puja has to be awakened within us. That's how we are having this uh, program here. Now, it is important that we have to establish the dharma within us. Without the dharma, you cannot have the ascent. And as I have told you before, that the cleanliness of your being depends on how much dharma you follow religiously. At the time of Moses, it was worked out and all the rules and regulations were created for realized souls. But as I read in one of the books, it was very good because if I had said this, people would not have believed that it had to be changed. I think during the speech the children should not be here, it's better to take them out. After the speech you can bring them along, those who make noises. Mm -hmm. Those who are quiet is all right, but those who are making noises, better to be out. If they are going to make noises, better to be out or near the door, so that if they make noises, you can get out. So there is no disturbance. Uh, during the puja is all right. You could be at the gate, uh, door or some place from where you can go. So the laws and regulations that were given to human beings were actually for the realized souls who would understand. But when Moses must have discovered the way human beings are, he must have changed them to very strict rules because with human beings as they are, one has to be extremely strict. They can't understand anything but fear. If you have a stick in your hand, you can put them right. Without that stick, Human beings won't listen. They are only all right if there's a fear. Now if you see the today, the condition of all the nations, those who are having leaders or prime ministers or presidents, they are all people extremely strict, uh, very dominating and very dry. And normally people like such people. Even Hitler succeeded because of that nature. So the character of a guru so far has been of a very strict nature for people who are not realized. Normally a guru doesn't, a good guru, Sadguru, he doesn't like to talk to people much. They throw stones or they don't like to talk to people who are not realized. But if they are realized, then these gurus change their attitude towards the people who want to see them. There's a tremendous difference between a person who is realized and non-realized in the protocol of God. 
A man may be the king or anything, he'll be asked to sit outside. It has nothing to do with what position you enjoy. As long as he's a realized soul and not possessed, he is given the highest position. But if you are possessed, then also the Guru will tell him that you get out from here, first get rid of your position and then come. And all these strict rules were there, that such and such person must be killed, such and such person must be given a punishment of cutting the hands, cutting the feet, even, even uh, absolutely destroying the eyes. This was done because they were not realized souls. It was a great realization of Moses, I think, that he took to the another kind of law, which is known as Shariat now, and that's what the Muslims are following. In a way, it's good, I think, because people who are now normal people really deserve such a rule. But it should not be so fanatical that you cannot discriminate between a realized soul and a non-realized soul. Now, the Guru within you will be awakened if you are strict with yourself. That's one point is very important. Unless and until you are strict with yourself, the Guru will not be awakened with you. People who are lazy lumps, who cannot sacrifice anything, who are very fond of comfort, can never be Gurus, take it. They can be good administrators, they can be anything, but never a Guru. A Guru should be willing to live the way he has to live. He should be able to sleep on stones, he should be able to sleep under any circumstances. Not that the disciple should force on him, but it should be his own nature that he can adjust himself. Comfort cannot crawl on a Guru. Now those who want your Guru principle to be awakened must know that you should not ask for comfort. Even for a thing like that, yesterday you saw them dancing. One has to do real tapasya. A intensive tapasya you have to do. You cannot learn even a thing like dancing without going into a penance about it. So a guru has to go through a penance is an important. Sahajogi need not go. But a Guru Sahajogi has to do it. We have to have penances. And the penance can be any kind of desire you have. Say, supposing you are very fond of food. Just don't eat the food that you want to eat. If you are very fond of sweet food, then eat something very bitter, raised to power 108. And if you are fond of some sort of a very, as Indians are sometimes, very spicy food, then eat so bland a food without salt. Teach your tongue to behave itself. It doesn't behove a guru to put his attention to food. I have seen some of the surgeries, they are all right when the food is there, quite concentrated. But when it comes to the program, they have no concentration. It's a sad thing. Such people cannot be gurus, they can be cooks. Good. Or could be food tasters or something like that. <laughs> we'll suit them better. But if they have to be gurus, they must learn to control their tongue and their desire. I mean, fasting is a good thing for such people. Fasting is very good. All the time they are ready, what are we going to have for lunch? What are we going to have for dinner? Such people cannot have their guru principle awakened, neither they can be gurus. So please be careful. The Guru must have control over the tongue. He must know when to get angry and when to be gentle. He must know what to say when, how much to say. That's why many Gurus have been way more effective by not speaking. Silence is the best way you can help others. But when it comes to explaining Sahaja Yoga, you should speak. But I have seen with some people, they are very eloquent when it comes to nonsensical things. But when it comes to Sahaja Yoga, they don't know anything about Sahaja Yoga. 
So you have to be the master of Sahaja Yoga if you have to be a guru. Not only in talking, but in your behavior, in everything. And the karamat is the, I don't know if you use charismatic word, charismatic they call it, or you say the word how to do it, how to raise the kundalini, how to put it at the sasrara, how to break the sasrara, all these things. You must know how to spend your knowledge, it's been yoga in Sanskrit. Guru principle is awakened in a person when he himself has achieved something. Imagine a half-paid guru going along talking is a guru. He'll end up as a disciple ultimately. So you have to be master of your own, but when the guru principle comes in, you have to give it to others. It's a question of giving it to others. So you have to be at a higher level to give to others. Have to be at a very higher level. If you are attached to money, if you are attached to food, if you are attached to mundane things of life, you cannot give. Now the higher state than that can be achieved, which is natural in me, but can be achieved is that you don't have to have any dependence like that, that any rules and regulations. Like saying that I will have no worry about food, I should fast, this, that. It all ends up when you eat but don't eat. That state one should have. That you are eating the food, and if you ask, did you have your lunch? I don't know. Will you have your lunch? I don't know. Absolutely indifferent to the problems of the body. Where did you sleep? I don't know. What did you eat? What will you have? I don't know. This kind of a state is called the atita state, where you go beyond. And whatever you do, you are doing it because it is to be done without paying any attention to it. It is automatic. Nothing is important. But this is before becoming atita, you have to tell yourself nothing is important. You see, is a Avir Bhava, as they call it, is a kind of a na, drama you have to put in. Oh, nothing is important, this carpet is not important, I should try to sleep on the cement. First you have to do that. <coughs> but what, after some time, it happens that you don't remember whether you slept on the cement or on a cot, where did I sleep, I don't know. That is the Atita state. And that state is to be achieved now by many Sahaja Yogis. In a state where you go beyond, say there is somebody who is before you and you have to get angry. All right, you give me left, right, left, right nicely and then you are smiling next moment. Did you get angry with that person? I don't know. Did that? Like Buddha once said something uh, in one village and there was a horrible fellow who got up and said lots of things to him. And when he went to the next village, the fellow felt that, oh, I should not have done that, left Vishuddhi perhaps. <laughs> so went down and said, I'm sorry, sir, I've said so and I should not have said it. I didn't know you are the enlightened one, so it happened, so you forgive me. He said, when? When did you say? He said, in the last village, oh, everything in the last village I've left there alone, I, I don't know. <laughs> that is the atita state of you have to get. So even not to feel is not important. These identifications, when they drop out completely, then you are doing things in a karma state, where like sun is shining, it doesn't know it is shining. 
When the vibrations are flowing, you don't know it is flowing. Already it has started working in. You are surprised, you raise the hands and the Kundalini is rising. You don't know you are raising the Kundalini actually. How do you raise it? You don't know. That's it. That state has already started, Atita in you. But get it established in every walk of life, everything that you go beyond. And if you can manage that, that's the highest that you have to reach. Now, with the incarnations, it's very different. It's the other way around. Everything is the other way around. They don't have to do any tapasya. They don't have to stop. They don't have to tell them. Whatever they do is the punya. They don't have to collect punya as either. If they kill somebody, it is dharma. If they hit somebody, it is the dharma. Nothing they do wrong. They are absolutely immaculate. If they deceive someone, they cheat someone, it's perfectly all right. Because for a higher goal, you have to give up the smaller goals. It's justified in our day-to-day -day life, you'll see, that when you are defending your country, there's an enemy on you, if you have to defend your country, you can slay him. You can cheat him. Diplomatically, you can be fooling. It's allowed. Why? Because for a higher glory, you have to give up the smaller glory. But for an incarnation, it is always the higher goal. He's not bothered about smaller goals at all. He doesn't have to weigh, think, rationalize, or to train himself or do some drama or anything. It's all done. Even the movement, every movement, every movement of an incarnation has a ripple in it, which is for the good. There's nothing, not even a moment is such which is not for the good of the world. So the incarnation is a very different thing that is not to be achieved, that has to be. Now, for example, the incarnation is the bhokta, is the enjoyer. He is the enjoyer of it. Many people say have created, now we have a carpet here from Turkey. These carpets were created by Turkish peoples some time back for an incarnation to see. So the Rutambara Pragya will bring it round in such a way that at least I see it or I have it so that their souls will be blessed, so that they feel nice. Like Michelangelo has made that not for popes, I can tell you this. <laughs> and not for all the rubbish people who go there. Neither Blake did all that work for the useless people who want to go and see new artists. It was all done for the incarnation to see. That's the way they are blessed the most. Because they are beyond, nothing touches them, nothing is important. But it's not rational or anything that they have trained themselves, but it is automatically there. Like Shri Krishna had to marry 16,000 women. Can you imagine? In those days of monogamy, he would be prosecuted hundred times. The reason was he has 16,000 powers. And he was to be born with those 16,000 powers on this earth. And five elements became his queens. He had to do some justification to have them around. And as I have now such yogis whom I have I mean, given realization, so automatically I am your mother, is established. But for him there was no way out but to marry his 16,000 powers. 
also he married, but he was never married. He was a bachelor, out and out, all his life. Because he is Yogeshwara and he is a Brahmachari. Who can marry him? So for them, all these worldly things are just a drama, has no meaning at all. It's just a drama. A person who is not an incarnation should not try to be. That's not the right of a human being. Like a policeman standing on the road, if he puts his hands right, left, we follow it. But you are some madman to go and stand there, he'll be arrested. So for normal people, even you are a guru, you shouldn't allow them to touch your feet. Only an incarnation's feet must be touched. And nobody else's feet must be touched. Of course in Samayachar, like as we have in India the custom to touch the feet of the father, but because the father is a representative of the father in you, that's what the mother but that's symbolic. But in reality, you are not to surrender yourself to anybody else but to an incarnation. Also, if there's a teacher in your any art or in any way, your master, you must touch his feet. Even to take his name, you have to pull your ears. But nobody who is a human being should make touch your feet, especially the Sahajogi should not. Nobody should ask anyone to touch your feet. As an elder you may. That's a different point, but not as a guru. It's a very dangerous thing. Once you start it, you know what it happens with so many. They are just gone out of such. So to develop the guru principle within you, first of all, you must develop yourself fully. Now how to develop yourself for Guru principle? one must see. We have got the ten principles within you, as I told you before, and we should develop these all ten principles in such a way that we stand out from others. Yesterday, as I told you, that when we do Dhyan, Dharana and Samadhi and achieve the blessings of the Rutambhara Pragya, then put that whole thing onto different areas as called as Desh or Bhumi. How you spend them is the point, is through mantras. Cleanse it through mantras. Cleanse it through your attention. Every day you must know which chakra to be cleared up. You must know about yourself, where is the problem, how it is to be cleansed, how we have to clear it out. Do not take it for granted. Many people who have got, say, left-sided problem, you will just bring them lemon and chilies and think that mother has done the job. I can only do the job temporarily. But if there's a vacuum, again you'll suck it. See, these vacuums within you feel hungry again to have some more. So to take out that vacuum is your job and for that you have to religiously get after all your defects. That's the most important thing for all of you. And try to put full attention to all these different deishas, it's the nations they are called as. And once you have cleared it, it is enlightened, it is full of light, then you call it Pradesh, means the desha has been enlightened. Once that has achieved, then you have reached a point you can become a guru. But still you are not a Sadguru. To become the Sadguru, you must achieve the state of Atita. 
The atita state is such that a person who is not a good man will tremble before it. A man who is a liar, who has cheated others, will lose his tongue. A man who has adulterous eyes, uh, who is a, a man without no control, without any control over his mind as far as the women are concerned or men are concerned, such a person will have shaking in his eyes. Some of them will shake. Those who have been possessed will be shaking very much. They will be all exposed before the light of a Sadhguru. When you achieve that, you don't have to fight them. They, they will themselves be exposed and you, you won't have to do anything about it. One day I was told that there is a servant, lady servant who is a very possessed person in the family. So I said, get rid of her. I went to the airport on my way, I stopped at that house and the maid servant just walked in, you see, and there was a big uh, gutter flowing, I mean, not a gutter but an open sort of a thing. And she saw me and she fell in that. I said, oh God. So I told the driver, take the car a little ahead. And she fell in. It happens. I was traveling by plane one day, and a gentleman in front started just jumping. So a Sahaja Yogi asked, are you from TM? He said, how do you know? He said, we know. So I sat back. <laughs> it may be they may all have… a day may come when they might start jumping like that or a pilot might start jumping. <laughs> it's a big problem for me. Even even the lights. You, you enter into any church and suddenly you find all the lights going up like this. Even in big banquets I find when I'm sitting there and suddenly everybody comes and sit down and all their boots come round, they start jumping and the people start looking, what's happening? Is there fire on? So many things can happen like that. There was a gentleman very much possessed in a war and we were going to a ship and there was a little platform on which we had to first jump. And the platform started going like this, like that, and the fellow didn't know what to do with it. He didn't understand why it was doing this. So when you reach that state, you don't have to argue or do anything. Even if you lift your eye, it happens that the person gets into problems. Or there could be some ego-oriented people, they'll melt down. First you have to do the drama of a guru. Dress up in a way uh, which is simple, you have to behave in a way which is very gentle because you have to attract them. Come along, come along, come along. That's advertising, advertising department. <laughs> And once it is done, that drama is done, it can be exposed very soon. You, they'll find you out that you are no good. You are just a dramatist. Once that drama has been done, then very cleverly you can bring out your real self before them. So first you don't show them that you are a real hard task master. Never. First use all your sweet qualities. The more they are difficult, the more I am gentle with them. Then they come inside. Then you put to the mill and you can cure them. First prepare. First of all, sometimes they are so frightened, they are so nervous, they are so upset, sometimes too much of ego. So be gentle. Gradually they strengthen themselves also in your company and then even if you hit them, they are all right. That's how it has to be done very cleverly. And if you see the way I manage my Guru Dham, you can also manage. 
But the key to Guru is patience, a complete patience and complete dependence on God Almighty. That's the key, complete patience. First you tell them that this should be such, but they will not accept, they will argue. How, why, this, that. All right, go ahead. Then they'll come back with a black eye, or they may come back with a punched nose. Then you said, all right, I'll soothe it down, you soothe it down, and then tell them. So is the wisdom, the discretion of Yogeshwara you should have? How to deal with people is very important. Why I say Yogeshwara? Because at the guru stage you have to give it on a collective level. Individual level finishes and you jump into collective once you start becoming a guru. So all these methods, which I explained the other day to Modi, you can understand that the ten of your problems at the void, once solved, you solve the sixteen problems of the vision. And once sixteen problems are crossed, you come to Agya. And at the Agya chakra, there is such a tremendous sacrifice without feeling the sacrifice, is awaiting. And one has to see what you can sacrifice in that Atita state, because you don't sacrifice anything. Everything is already sacrificed, what is there to sacrifice? And such a state should be achieved by realizing that you are realized souls, you are not ordinary people. And you cannot have ordinary, mundane types of rules and regulations, mm -hmm. like yama niyama. The niyamas are for yourself, yamas for others, nothing. There should be absolute truth with it. So much so, that you should manifest them. And all these truths have powers. But every truth that is within you established, you don't have to do anything, they work out themselves. So first of all, you must get your chakras all right. On the chakras, you must put your attention. After the samadhi state, you will start opening them out properly clear them out, know what are the chakras that are bad. I have seen people who have very bad few chakras and many good chakras, but they will be only uh, enjoying the good chakras and will not worry about the bad ones. Pay attention to your bad chakras, cleanse them, cleanse them. Put all your attention to that. Put the attention of the God, of the deity whom you worship. And you get the complete manifestation of their power within yourself. So clear all the chakras, all the pradeshas to be established. And after the establishment of the pradeshas, you have to establish the rapport with others on the collective level. Then a state where you become a complete spirit at Agacha. It's the easiest in Sahaja Yoga and I have told you the reason, because you are such fortunate people. The easiest of easiest is Sahaja Yoga, the essence of Sahaja Yoga, that is the easiest thing to do. And that is why you should take full advantage of that 
easiest method, made easy. <coughs> Absolutely fine. This is the blessing of Guru Puja for you, that you all should become gurus by next year. Just you have to dedicate and say today in your heart to promise me, in your heart that Mother, not we will try but we will be, and thrice you should say we will be, we will be. Now last of all, I want to tell you that now I've completed my 60th year and no more celebrations of my birthday. This is the last. Please remember this. I've accepted whatever you said because of 60th birthday is very auspicious. After this, no more celebration of my 60th birthday. <laughs> You have already thought of giving me some present from all Europeans. On a 60th birthday, I am accepted. But no more of this kind of planning should be done anymore for the 60th birthday, which is over now. I am telling you very frankly, all right? So nobody is going to celebrate my 60th birthday anymore. I hope it's clear to you. <laughs> so the protocol of the Guru and the Mother is to be understood in Sahaja Yoga mostly by experiencing. But that doesn't mean that you go out of the way to experience the other side of it. By being protocolish more and more, you'll find you'll receive much more help. Like Nick, one day I told him, 
will tell you that. There were two ladies who wanted to go to Belgium. I told them they are going tomorrow. And the lady said, no, we are going today. He said, the mother has said that you are going tomorrow, so you will go tomorrow, whatever it is. They said, no, we are going today. How is it mother has said that we are going tomorrow? He said, but he said it. They wouldn't listen. So we sent them to the airport and they found they have to go next day. <laughs> So that is how it is, that the protocol should be that, yes, Mother has said it doesn't matter. It may go wrong, doesn't matter. Whatever she says, that's obey and see. By experiencing only you will know, but in the beginning only you will say, no, we will not do this and that, it's not good. So the protocol is the simplest of simple to do. So that's the essence of Sahaja Yoga, the simplest of the simple is the protocol. If you understand the protocol, you don't have to do anything, you will grow by it automatically. <coughs> but you lack in protocol and that's how you do not. <coughs> this is the point is yes, that to grow best in Sahaja Yoga is to know the protocol, which you can ask others. <laughs> With experienced people you can ask or if you want to have your own experience you can have. But some people try the other way around, like answering me by saying all kinds of things, they think, let's experiment what happens. And then they break their necks and come to me for curing. So that should not happen. Experience should be for betterment. And that's how, if you can ask others, take their advice, those people who are rising higher than normal, what is the protocol? And put your attention to it. How can you improve your protocol? What should we do to do? observe a protocol. What wrong are we doing? Where are we going wrong? Because the essence of Sahaja Yoga today is the protocol, which should be the simplest. Should be the simplest thing to do. And once you know the protocol that if she has said it, if it is meant, then it's all. But some people are so funny that they start using me as a quotation. Mother has said, everybody must fast. I told somebody that, no, you better fast. So a thin man comes next day fainting. I said, what happened? <laughs> when I say something to a particular person, they just circulate it. Because they think, why should I fast or no? Everybody must fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big problem that they always quote me. Nobody is to quote me to others because one thing is important. Whatever you have to say, you put it on the notice board, maybe with my signature better. For general and for particular whatever I say, you should do it for particular. At least that much discretion, discretion we all should have. And try. You'll be very much hurt. You'll be surprised. You'll be very much hurt. Because it is for all, everything is for your betterment and a special grace if you understand the essence of protocol. <coughs> so I'm taking you to that point where you start understanding that nothing is to be surrendered to Mother as such because she doesn't take anything, nothing goes to her. Is only you are surrendering yourself by leaving all that is not wanted. It's a very beautifying process which one should take. You all have come up so much and you have to go very much further. I am sure you will go ahead and will become great gurus as you have promised today by next day.